Well, good Wednesday afternoon and happy November. We finally made it to the 11th month of the year. As you can hear, I'm doing a moderately better. My voice has returned after, <laughs> now I'm going to call. <coughs> My voice has returned after uh, a three week hiatus here. Uh, but you know, like I said, that's normal for me. I get bronchial things all the time. And uh, that's why I guess I'm not a career YouTuber or television presenter because uh, yeah, that just wouldn't work too well. But things are looking up. Uh, we're now heading into the holiday slalom as we do. November uh, is probably one of my busiest months for two reasons. Uh, number one is uh, the holidays are coming up. Everyone's like, oh, that piece of art I saw, I think I need to go get it now. And I also have commissions uh, that I need to finish uh, because the deadline's coming up. And also uh, I usually have a show or two in December. So that means, you know, I've got that deadline coming up. And then of course, you know, not to be content with, you know, all the other things I'm doing. November is also National Novel Writing Month or NaNoWriMo for short. And of course, I always throw my creative hat in the ring and I do that as well. Now this year, instead of writing, trying to write a novel from scratch, I'm actually taking the one I've been working on for a couple of years now. And I am going to, you know, finish a couple extra bits I wanted to put into it. Uh, finish the final rough edit and uh, just be done, done, done with it. So I can send it to what they call beta readers or, you know, AKA, you know, willing victims who will read through the entire manuscript and give me their first impressions. But it's really fun, you know, knowing that tons and tons and tons of people all over the world now are writing at the same time you are. And, uh, you know, generally they try to come away with a 50,000 page manuscript by the end of it. Uh, I'll be happy if I can get in an additional, you know, 10 to 20,000 because I'm not trying to write an entire novel. I'm just writing in some supplemental information that I didn't get uh, to put in the first first draft that I finished last year. Um, but because it's November, I'm hoping I can still squeeze in at least one or two more plein air outdoor painting sessions uh, before you know it gets really bad. We've already had our first snow, as you saw here at the beginning of the video, which is typical. The last week of October is almost always our average cold snap or snow. I tell newcomers that it could be as early as September or as late as the end of December. Uh, we're that variable because the mountains here. Uh, this is when, you know, it starts getting kind of chilly in the morning and chilly, cold air, not so good for the lungs. So I am going to be very judicious in choosing when uh, to go out and paint outside. But never to fear, I am definitely going to keep doing my birds and also landscapes from, you know, uh, sketches, photos, and memories. And I will tr continue to share as many tips and cool things that I come across for all of you who are following me just for the art and not my charming personality. <laughs> so this this last week, when, you know, I wasn't feeling too great still. I, I had a bit of a relapse of this bronchial crud. My throat got sore again. So I decided to show you what I do when I have scrap material. Uh, scrap material is what I call failed paintings or just paintings that didn't go the way I wanted them to or they're just unfinished or whatnot. So I'll have a, you know, a piece like this and, you know, and I might make something out of it later, but let's pretend I don't like it. And then on the other side, look at that. It's completely still usable paper. So um, I'll take that and I'll, you know, paint on that side or I'll take a painting, cut it down. And I could use this side or, you know, this side here like this. And so what I've done is I've taken, you know, the other half of this painting and I will show you what I have done with it and a couple um, fun techniques that you can use on a regular painting or just, you know, on an experimental scrap like what I've just done. All right, so first I take the piece of paper and I make sure the tape is completely down and around it so no water can get in. I get my hake brush, which you can get pretty inexpensively at most art supply stores. And I get it completely and thoroughly wet and start putting it across the piece that I already did. You have to go kind of gently so it doesn't disturb the under layer. And it does help if you have uh, pigments that are a little bit more staining, but I think in this case they weren't, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so this is a uh, Princeton Neptune liner brush, I believe, or a script brush. Yeah, 
So what you do is you make sure that the there's a lot of paint, not, um, not watery, and you very carefully with a thin brush work your way up. And if you look up close, you can see how it kind of fuzzes out because of the water underneath it, and it gives it a really nice uh, pine tree look to it. It's not too harsh. And uh, this is all just, you know, from memory. I'm not uh, looking at any photos or anything. So when you do a pine tree, there's different kinds of pine trees, of course, and they all have different growth patterns. Uh, but typically, all pine trees have the same thing in that, for the most part, they start branching upwards at the top, and then by the middle, they're st sticking more or less straight out and parallel. And then by the time you get to towards the bottom of the trunk, there'll be the gravity will seem to be pulling the branches downward. And you'll see me doing this here. See at the top it's um, pulling up midway kind of straight. And then as I go further down, see how they're just drooping and getting more and more towards the earth. But because the paper's so saturated. I don't feel like I'm, you know, in a big rush like I usually am. And you can see the water was pooling a little bit too much there, and so I had to kind of blot it a little bit. And then I'm like, you know what? This tree needs a friend. And so <laughs> I started giving him a, a companion there. Same deal. Upright, then you get straight out towards the middle. And then going more downwards as you get closer to the ground. And you can see the dampness of the paper. It's making it all nice and fuzzy. Like there's little blurs of needles there. And sometimes as it dries, I like to give a little bit more definition to the trunk. And now I step away from it, I take a look. I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to put in a shadow. And it's still damp, so it'll still be kind of fuzzy. And a lot of times uh, in snow, reflections uh, will tend to be more bluish. But a lot of, what they really are doing is reflecting the sky color. Just intensifying it a bit because once again the water this is on an angle so all that water has pooled towards the bottom and it diffused out the the paint that I was putting down 
Almost a little more than I expected. And so that's why you see me blotting this up. Oh, not there. <laughs> Sometimes I just go back in, put in a few more details because, you know, it's starting to fuzz out too much. dryer and uh, I typically don't put it on the highest or hottest setting so it takes a while so through the magic of editing <laughs> I took out you know, a minute or two of me blow drying there and so now it has dried and then next I'm going to show you a cool little trick that uh, you might already be aware of, but I didn't for a long time, that you can take one of these uh, one of these templates you can get at a craft store, or I think even Walmart kind of places have them in, uh, in certain sections uh, for drawing circles for architecture or other things. And you take it, you find what size you think of a moon or sun that you would like, and you take um, a magic eraser which I've mentioned before, it's uh, put out by Mr. Clean. Uh, it's a melamine uh, material, kind of a sponge. And what you do is it'll just lift up a real thin layer off of the paper of the pigment. You just kind of press and squish it around and holding that uh, template really still. And once again, the trick of this, it has to be absolutely dry underneath or it won't work. Or if it does, it won't work properly. So you see how I got that pure white and then, ta-da, instant moon. So this way you don't have to use, you know, masking fluid or any of that mess. And the real sick, you know, you have to make sure it's super, super dry uh, afterwards. And sometimes I'll even take a shot of a hair dryer to it. And then, not to be outdone, you can also use the template there, the edge of it and do the same thing going up to it to give it the feeling of snow. You can see all the little bits of paper coming up. Oh, you now always check a little bit. And the secret with the sponge is do not get it too wet. Like just, you know, get it wet then squish it out as much as you can so it's just barely damp. And see I'm going in between the shadows. and then blotting it so if there is any extra moisture it's not you know seeping and blooming or blossoming underneath get all the little bits off there and voila snow isn't that cool? So once again, dry everything off because that moisture, it's very slow sometimes. And once it gets under the fibers, it can slowly, slowly start seeping into other things, even though it feels dry to the touch. So when in doubt, dry it out. And then I just get a little bit fiddly and I think I just, uh, Add in a little bit more of the trunks. Okay. 
And then last but not least, I get out my Zacto knife and I start scritching out the, a, few, a handful of stars. And when I scratch out stars, uh, I tend to not make them evenly spaced because that's not how it works in the sky. Some stars will be closer together, some are further apart. And you can get really crazy with putting in stars, but I think I'm just putting in a few because the moon typically will make them not as bright. But I do like making them, it's so much fun. And then at the end, I'll take off the tape. And you can see where I still have those uh, five by seven marks that I put down. And what I'll do is I'll dry, see it's all damp underneath on the edges there. So I'll dry that out with a hairdryer and then tape that off and scrub out the edges once again with the, the magic eraser to give it a nice clean edge on all sides. And there we are. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, tiny painting and maybe I'll be doing more of these in the future. Thanks so very much and you have an awesome rest of your week. Because, gosh, I can't talk today. <sighs> because, What was I gonna say, Skeeter? I might not, I might not be able to get out and. and it's kind of like a, you know, a director's. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm so tired. Oh, I can't talk. I'm so tired and so sick. Okay.